Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're gonna be talking about make files, which is a very basic build system. And I'm gonna show you some of the tricks for them as well as what phony is. This is what reminded me to make this video as someone in my chat asked what phony is in a make file. Uh, but anyway, let's jump into it. Okay, so make file uh, is, well, <laughs> the command make, <laughs> Uh, specifically, we're going to talk about GNU make. There are many varieties of make, but we're specifically going to be doing GNU make today. Uh, it is a way to uh, encode a build system in a simple set of rules and targets, and uh, it also implements an execution engine, which will run those targets for you. And we're going to be making a very simple C program today just to demo this, uh, mostly so we can have multiple targets, inputs, outputs, that sort of thing. Uh, so let's start by making a small C program. So we're going to do main.c. Uh, we're going to have a header file, lib.h, and it's going to have a this this header file is going to define a function for us called hello world. Again, this is not a very interesting example, but uh, we're going to have it say hello to me and return nothing. Next, we need to make our lib.h, which uh, a little include guard here, even though it doesn't matter for this video. And if, and we're gonna have void hello world, and that's gonna take a care star for our name. It's gonna be our little header file there. We also need to define that library, lib.c. Uh, we're gonna need c st uh, standard io.h and void hello hello world takes our name and very simply we're going to print out hello hello percent s new line and name so that's our that's our very simple set of c code here uh, and we can see all of that right here so we've got lib.c which has our function lib.h which defines our prototype for the function and then main.c which uh, includes that and to build this all together, we essentially need to build two things. We need to build lib.c and then main.c, and then we need to stitch them together into our output binary. And that's where make is going to kind of come into play for us. So make uses a make file, and conventionally the make file is capitalized and uses tabs as indentation, which is really <laughs> annoying <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, so we're going to turn off my normal space uh, expansion in here and use tabs instead. And make conventionally uses whatever the first target is in the file. Now, uh, the the typical, <laughs> like the conventional first target I've seen is called all. And all, uh, I guess the way you define targets in make is you have a name of the target and then a colon and then whatever it depends on. And so in our case, we're going to be building this target called main, which is going to be our executable. And our all target is going to require that. Uh, we're also going to mark all as phony. We'll talk more about what that means in a second, but uh, for now we'll just write this special dot phony colon all syntax, and uh, we'll we'll ignore it for now. I'll explain it in a bit. Cool. So next we need to define our rule for main, and in this case main is going to depend on our object files for both of our C files. So we're going to compile them from C into .o, and then we're going to stitch all of our .o files together. And so in this case main is going to depend on lib.o and main.o. I put main first, it doesn't really matter. Um, I just, <laughs> for whatever reason, want to do that. And in order to run this, we're going to specify what commands are needed to build this. So all didn't require any commands, so we were able to just, you know, just write inputs and outputs, and we skipped that. Uh, but commands are indented after the, uh, after the target, and in this case we're going to use gcc and we're going to pass in both of these objects and write out our main. So we're going to do dash o main, main.o, lib.o. And I'll show you actually a way to simplify the duplication of this later. Uh, but we need a little bit more advanced features of main files to do that. OK, next we're going to talk about our object files. So we need to write the, the rule for those. And if we do main.o depends on main.h, or not main.h, main.c. And this is going to do gcc dash c main dot c dash o main dot o. And so this is you know, going to compile this c object or this c file into an object file. And we need to do the same thing for lib dot o. And again, 
this is this is some code duplication here. I'll show you a way to simplify this uh, later when we get into automatic make variables. Uh, but this is kind of our very basic make file. And if we were to run make and we can put the target name. So let's say we wanted to make specifically main.o. We could do make main.o and you'll see it'll run this particular command here. If we run it again, make will actually tell us that it is up to date. And this is because make looks at all of the targets and if they have a newer m time or equivalent m time to the outputs, then it knows that it doesn't have to redo any work here. So it, it allows you to kind of uh, skip some already done work. And again, if we run make with no arguments, it's gonna run whatever the first target is in our file. In this case, it's the all target, which depends on main, and main depends on main.o and lib.o, and so it's gonna figure out all those dependencies and then build whatever we need to make our, our file here. Um, so you can see it, it built lib.o, it didn't need to build main.o because we already built it up here, and then it combined those two into our output executable here, which we can now run. Now, usually it's also a good idea to make a clean target, and this is also going to be phony. Again, we haven't talked about that yet, uh, but we will do that in a second. Uh, and clean is going to remove all of our, uh, you know, outputs here that that uh, are build targets. So in that case, we're going to get rid of main. And we're going to get rid of our O file. So we could just do rm star dot O. And we'll do dash F so it doesn't error. Uh, and main here. And so if we run make clean now, uh, you'll see that we have deleted the non-source files here. Um, and that's that's kind of the basics of what a make file is. Uh, so let's talk about what phony is. Phony is a way to bypass the normal uh, execution model of a make file. So normally a make file is designed to have inputs and outputs and build sort of build targets, things that actually exist on the file system. Now there isn't anything named clean on the file system and we don't produce that as a part of this. And so we mark it as phony. This allows us to use make files as sort of a command runner and less so as a build system. Uh, and I'll show you what happens if I leave this out. So if I leave out uh, clean there and I do make clean, you'll see that it ran this and it, it still kind of works here. But if I were to make a file named clean, uh, make is going to say, oh, clean is up to date. Yeah, that file exists because you know, none of, it has no targets, so it doesn't need to do any work. And it, you know, it, it clearly exists there. Um, and by marking it phony, make will say, oh, I, I don't use my normal build uh, stuff here, so I'm always going to run whatever command is there. And so that's, that's kind of what phony does there. And uh, you usually only mark your targets that uh, are just command execution. So like in this case, all, all is kind of a special command in that like we don't have any commands to run, but we always want to make sure that our builds are built properly. Um, and clean is an example like this. Another example would be like running your tests. You kind of always want to run your tests um, to, to make sure that they still work. Uh, cool. So let's talk about how we can simplify this make file down. Because again, there's a lot of duplication here. and Make has a bunch of things that make this a little bit easier. And for that, we're going to be consulting the automatic variables section of the make documentation. Uh, and this includes a lot of you know, special variables that allow us to uh, simplify these things down. So the first one we're going to talk about is dollar sign at. And this is a special target which refers to the output of the target. So in this case, it'll refer to main. Uh, so we can start by rep, uh, replacing mean with dollar sign at here. And we'll do the same for this, oops, right here. This is also our output there. So that's the first replacement that we can do here. And if you make clean and make again, uh, you'll see that it, it substituted those things in for us. So we still got our main executable here. The next thing we're going to talk about is dollar less than which will be the name of the very first prerequisite in our in our uh, inputs here. So in this main.o case, it's going to refer to main.c. So we can replace out main.c with dollar less than. We'll also do that down here. Now you'll notice a kind of neat thing here. Both of these have the same command now. And we'll, we'll actually use that fact later to simplify this further. Uh, make clean all. Oh, you can also specify multiple targets on uh, the command line and it will run both of those at the same time. So you can see we're able to clean and this still produces our same output here. Now the next bit of simplification uh, is the you know, getting rid of all of these being duplicated here. For that there is dollar caret 
which is uh, the name of all prerequisites with spaces in between them. So this allows us to reference each of these object files uh, directly in here. We can do that with dollar, dollar caret. And so now if we were to add more object files here, we don't need to change our command at all. And if we do this again, just to show you that it works, see that we have replaced that out. So now all of our commands actually don't reference our uh, actual file names or outputs at all, which is really cool. Now, does this talk about percent substitution in here? It does not. Okay, well, there's some other part of the make documentation that talks about percent substitution. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna skip the docs because I know how this works. Um, and this is kind of a special wild card as part of your targets. You can use a percent in the name, and then that will get substituted in any of the targets as well. So if we're trying to build main.o, for instance, this will get substituted as main, and this will get substituted as main. So main.o depends on main.c, and that lets us delete this other target down here. So now we have you know, our entire set of objects are represented by this generic rule here. And if we clean all again, you can see that it, it still successfully builds those two targets for us. And that's kind of like a, a simplified make file here using some you know, variables, uh, magical variables, as well as some substitutions here. Now, another kind of basic thing about make is uh, the dash j argument to make. And this, so do make help, is it gonna tell us dash j? Yeah. Uh, J tells J is the number of jobs, and this allows you to build stuff in parallel. So we were just doing serial builds here, but if we do make dash J eight, for instance, it will use up to eight processes to complete the work here. Um, now this, you know, <laughs> is a very silly, simple example, so it's hard to show that it's faster when doing that, but uh, it could execute these two in parallel. And because it knows about the dependency tree, it knows that it has to wait for these two to complete before this one can start. So. It does, it does, you know, the tree of dependencies for you. But anyway, that's kind of a, a short tutorial of make and some examples with the uh, automatic variables as well as a variable substitution. We talked about what phony is and showed you a, <laughs> a neat little example. Anyway, hopefully this was useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.